Robertson has got more on him. Underneath, he shoots and scores the game winner for the Blue Devils. What's really good, y'all? Thanks for tuning back in for another dose of the Weekly Watch. It has been so much fun to be a college lacrosse fan recently with so many great games popping off all season, even with only in-conference or abbreviated schedules happening pretty much everywhere. There has been no shortage of instant classic games, amazing players, and even a couple of super teams running the show this year. So since college lacrosse has been so good lately, and last week we just talked about pro lacrosse, this week we're just gonna talk about college. Like, have y'all seen the amount of upsets that have been happening over the last week or so? Well, okay, Lee high beat army and drexel beat umass but i'd hardly call either of those upsets to be honest like those are great wins to pick up for both lehigh and drexel but lehigh's the top 10 team this year and drexel's low-key underrated but these games were upsets though umbc upset vermont Everyone's been high on Vermont ever since they showed up in the Dome and beat a pretty good Albany team. Vermont is obviously still a great squad, but if I'm keeping it 100, I didn't see them holding the L to UMBC. And that's no disrespect to the Retrievers, like, at all. They're 5-1 and one now after that win, but I felt like Vermont had the edge on strength of schedule alone. So, shout out to the boys in Baltimore County for that win. Alright, so the dog that lives in this house behind me is not happy that I'm vlogging here, so we're gonna go ahead and kick this can down the road. So anyways, in other upset news, bruh. So anyways, like I was saying, Utah beat BU in double overtime this past weekend. And that was a crazy one because BU was a hot team playing at home against a two and five team looking for its first win in almost a month. And if we're keeping it a buck, I could probably do an entire weekly watch episode about how Utah is a really young team with a lot of non hotbed talent. But y'all know what I mean by that. But I say that because I feel like that's a pretty important detail here. BU is a solid squad, man. Their only loss before this was a two-goal loss to Army, who could mess around and win the Patriot League still. So for a Utah team of mostly freshmen and sophomores to go on the road to Boston, play a hot BU team, survive, get to overtime, and get the win in double overtime, that's impressive. And then lastly, <sighs> Michigan beat Hopkins for the first time. I gotta tell you, as a Hopkins fan, this one's tough to talk about because I had pretty high hopes for this season. But I feel like at the end of the day, you gotta give it up to Michigan. They got their first program win over Ohio State back in 2019. And now in 2021, they had their first program win over Hopkins. On the road, no less. I was yucking it up on Twitter after Penn State lost to Michigan. Like we were somehow immune from that. I played myself, man. All right, man, forget it. Let's just change the subject. Did y'all see that Ethan Walker broke the school scoring record and that went over Marquette? That boy Ethan is a scorer, bro. Like, we know this. This dude is a walking bucket. If his hands are free within 15 yards, just turn and rake, man. Like, you can't put a shorty on that dude. Do not do that. He ended the Marquette game with 256 career points. And just for some extra context, that puts him in front of... <laughs> All right, are y'all ready to hear this? Westberg... Connor Canizaro and Mark Matthews. All of them very recent Pio legends, two of them being very well established in both the indoor and outdoor professional lacrosse games. Ethan is such a no brainer pickup in both the PLL and NLL drafts later this year. So just know that we're all witnessing history together. I like watching history being made. Okay, with that being said, we have two more topics to cover on this week's episode. But before we do that, I just want to take a quick break. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. And while we're taking that break, go ahead and comment down below which PLL or NLL team that you would want to see Ethan Walker play on. All right, let's get back to it. Look for this next section. Syracuse fans might come from my neck just for me asking this question, but I'm a truth teller. So let me ask y'all something real quick. How far is Syracuse going to go this season? I feel like the Syracuse team we see out there changes from week to week. Like, yo, they got smacked by Notre Dame and Army beat up on them pretty good too. But at the same time, they hung a 20 spot on UVA, only lost to Duke by one and almost won the game and haven't lost to any team that they shouldn't lose to. And like I said, Cuse hasn't lost to any bad teams, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that a seven point loss to Notre Dame is a bad loss for a team that everybody is saying is a final four lock. Like, I'm not about to get on the internet and tell people that Cuse is done. Like, they're not done. And I start laughing every single time people start talking about a John Desco replacement on Twitter. I'm just here to ask y'all, how far do you think Syracuse is going to go this year? Because the poll that I looked at before recording this video had Syracuse at number four behind Duke, UNC, and Maryland. No matter how you slice it, it's going to be a loaded tournament field this year. And all the Q stands are going to say, yeah, they're going all the way. But like, what about you unbiased fans? Like, are they Final Four bound? Will they run into a team like Rutgers and get bumped? What do y'all think? Comment down below. And finally, did y'all catch the Duke UNC game? I hope you did. 
instant classic. Matter of fact, if you ain't peeped yet, just go back and watch the full game on YouTube. Watch the whole 60 minutes, skip the highlights. This game featured two of the most impressive men's college lacrosse teams that we've ever seen. Gray versus Sowers, Adler versus Krieg, JT versus Bowen, Clash of the Titans. And usually a matchup like this with so much offensive firepower would have been super high scoring, especially now in the shot clock era. But the defense and the goalies were the stars that night. Mike Adler went 61% on 17 saves and Colin Creed went 54% on 14 saves. Both teams were playing really great defense, so like quality shots were hard to come by. And even those got saved most of the time. And like, I could go on and on about Nikki Solomon, Justin Anderson, the Kyron Montgomery, Brandon O'Neill, but I just want to talk about the only player in that game that had more than three points, Joe Robertson. All right, it's getting a little dark out. Let me throw this little light on here. Is that better? Joe was playing in that game like everybody forgot who he was. My man went off for four goals and three assists, including the diving game-winning goal in overtime. Like JT Giles Harris and Will Bowen's respective defensive units did a great job minimizing both Mikey Sowers and Chris Gray's impact on the offensive side of the ball. But bro, UNC had a short stake on Joe Robertson most of the game. UNC really put a shorty on a dude that scored 60 points in 2018 and 58 points in 2019. Like, I get that this is a pick your poison offense to try to defend, but yo, Joe made them boys pay on that one. This was the first time these two men's lacrosse programs played against each other as a number one and number two matchup. Like, yo, this game did not disappoint. Seriously, go back and watch the game if you haven't seen it yet. All right, and with that, I gotta be done for this week. I blabbed on and on about enough college lacrosse stuff for this week, but keep it locked right here. We're gonna have more content coming your way and there's gonna be more stuff heating up as Memorial Day gets closer. If you like this video, don't forget to toss us a like on your way out. Either way, I'll catch you on the flip. Peace.